So one thing that's always very much fascinated me is divorce, especially celebrity divorce. Why? Because this is something that people spend their whole lives fantasizing about and they finally get married and they meet their seemingly perfect spouse, rich, successful, handsome, good looking. And then within a year, sometimes less, they end up divorcing and they have to go through this whole process of divvying up their money and then giving it to their partner and so forth. And sometimes even there's child custody issues. And this constantly keeps happening. So what's the deal here? So in this video, I'm gonna cover five reasons that people screw up their marriages and why this keeps happening. Because on the outset, it seems so fascinating that it does. I got this info from reading a few books on the topic since I figured, you know, this is an important uh, area. Why not cover it in detail? So, um, the books actually are very uh, scientific. They're mostly by John Gottman, who is the uh, premier marriage researcher. He's been spending uh, decades studying marriage, and he has like a 96% success rate in predicting divorce whereas the average marriage counselor according to research has about a 50 percent success rate so no better than flipping a coin um, but this guy knows what he's talking about so based on what i've read through the book i think the first thing that i found is that they focus on the wrong traits the flashy traits the things that attract people rather than what keeps a marriage working so what does that mean specifically Money. Money is a big one, and then looks is another. So if someone's rich, people are like, oh man, that's a done deal. This is going to be a great marriage. He or she will be able to provide for me. Or if they see someone that's good looking, they're going to be like, man, she's really hot. I mean, what else could I want? That's going to be awesome. And these are usually the things that end up actually attracting people and putting you above the competition. And you, this is also what you hear people look for uh, when you ask them what they look for in a partner. It's almost biological. And so, of course, they assume, you know, if you have these things, it's going to be a happy marriage. But actually, that's not really what keeps a marriage going. So that brings us to number two. The second thing is they don't look for or they don't emphasize the same values and morals. So that's very important. If you're going to be with someone, they probably should have the same uh, values and ethics as you. That doesn't necessarily mean the same religion. Maybe it does, but it usually means like, well, what do you value? What do you care about? And most people, they, don't even, they haven't even taken a moment to decide that for themselves, let alone look for that in a partner. And some of it naturally happens, you know, they kind of sift it out and feel it out when they're dating. But usually... It doesn't specifically happen. I mean, most of the time when you are Netflixing or, and chilling or just going on a, a dinner date or something, how often do you say like you go from talking about some TV show to bringing up, hey, these are the things that really value to me. I don't treat someone how I don't want to be treated myself. I never rob. I never steal. I don't do drugs. And I really care about X, Y, and Z. Does that ever really get brought up? Sometimes it does, but oftentimes there's no intention there, so it gets forgotten. And you end up with something where you're five years into a marriage and you realize this person doesn't treat others the same as me, doesn't behave the same as me, is willing to lie or cheat or steal in ways that I would never do. So that's number two. That brings us to number three. The third thing that I think... Uh, people get wrong when when searching for for a partner is how they come across in terms of personality so specifically they care too much about how funny or kind a person is now personality is important and funny and kind I mean those are good traits people want to hang around people who are also funny and kind and that's all good to have, but similar to number one, just having those isn't enough for a good marriage. 
I mean, those are good to have. And that's usually stuff that attracts people like, oh, this guy's really funny. I like him. But in terms of what actually matters for a marriage, it has much more to do with trust and honesty and respect. Those are the three pillars to a good marriage or relationship, a long term relationship. And so when, you know, someone's funny and stuff and they're, they're cute and stuff, you just want to hang around them and all, all, you may just prioritize that higher than stuff that matter. And you may not notice when they're a bit disrespectful. You let that slide or they're not always honest with you and they let that slide. And then there's a little bit of cheating that goes on and then it just goes downhill from there because those things start to erode trust. And then when trust is gone, the marriage is going to be explode. Your, your trust, as John Gottman says, is almost like a bank account. You know, you can add to it or you can deplete from it. But then once it hits zero, you're in a bad spot. So that brings us to number four, the fourth thing that you can do that you can look out for so that you can have a strong marriage is make sure you find someone who doesn't criticize or hold content with you. Now, no one really starts out doing this when they're going on dates, but it slowly creeps up more and more in every relationship. Um, and you know, some, it never occurs just because of the, the dynamic, but over time, as you get used to the person and the looks aren't as great anymore because you're with this person every day, that happens really quickly. The criticism, the content, those disrespectful things pop up and those destroy a relationship. And what's really the reason for this is that it's not something you prioritize. Once again, people just think about, okay, is she hot? Is she funny? Is she good looking? Does she have a personality that I get along with well enough? And they don't look specifically with intention for, well, is she respectful? How often do we have criticism or content or negative things in our discussion once we've settled down and got to know each other after the six month mark? And that one causes a lot of hardship too, because on the surface level, you may have all these good things, you know, good looking, famous, funny, agreeable and stuff like that. But then those other things come into mind. Maybe they don't take out the chores or they don't do something they should and they start to disrespect you. And, and you know, that's why they say looks fade or, you know, personality last looks fade because no matter how hot someone is after a while that goes away and then you're left with the things that really are core to making a marriage last and then finally number five the fifth thing that you can do i'm actually walking back and forward repeatedly because this is the best lighting the fifth thing that you can do um and by the way, this is a new leather jacket. Check out my All Saints leather jacket unboxing video after this. Um, I'm really getting into men's fashion, but sorry. Fifth thing that you should do and you should look for is make sure you find someone who really cares about building a, a life with you and pursuing your lifelong dreams. John Gottman reveals that many people have big dreams and big can be relative but like dreams and something that often tears out apart marriages is when they don't support the other in pursuing it and it may seem on surface level oh yeah well, I'm gonna help the other person but when you dive down into the details will you actually because let's say your partner's dream is to one day become a chef and that requires moving to France for two years because she wants to be a gourmet level chef. Is that a sacrifice you're willing to make? Is that something when, when push comes to shove, are you going to support her and say, Hey, you really want to be a chef or you really want to be a medical student and I'm going to support you. And even though I hate traveling and so forth, this is something that's, that's part of your, your uh, dreams and I'm going to support that. So, those are things that are very interesting and 
Um, it also gets difficult and interesting because life, life gets complicated. You know, maybe you don't want to travel, but you click on many other levels. Does that mean that this marriage is eventually going to disintegrate? Maybe, maybe not. So um, I think in conclusion, the biggest thing that you want to look out for is just other things outside of the obvious attractors. Because those attract, but do they keep a relationship from divorce? No. Of course, you're still going to, and there's no stopping you from being attracted to someone who has money, is funny, is you know into the same hobbies, uh, all those things, good looking, whatever. And you should. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That being said, those are not really the traits that matter the most when you're deciding about a life partner. And people mistake and believe that it is because of not doing scientific research, just playing off their feelings and hoping. And that is why I believe, you know, I'm still doing research on this, but um, I find it very fascinating. That's why I believe a lot of celebrities, and this will continuously keep happening, they marry these people who seem so amazing on the outset and then within a couple years a few months they end up divorcing i mean i'm sure there's more to it than that especially with the pressure of the hollywood system and all the temptation there but this can be applied to not celeb not just celebrities but you as well you know if anything compromise a little bit on those other flashy stuff you know if you have to decide choose someone who has the same values as you, respects you, is honest, builds trust, doesn't ever criticize you, supports your, your big dreams versus, you know, a few extra points on how they look or how wealthy they are or any of those other flashy things that we naturally gravitate to. Hopefully this video helped and good luck to your relationships.